Okay, it looks like our uh, attendee flow is uh, slowing down a bit. <clears throat> uh, I was hoping for 4.3 million attendees, but uh, it looks like 48 will have to do. Uh, so thank you all for being here uh, with us today. Uh, my name is Michael Valera. I'm uh, CEO of the Institute for Healthcare Advancement. Our organization, Institute for Healthcare Advancement, is a co-sponsor for this uh, conference. Uh, along with the Harwood Center for Health Literacy. I hope you're enjoying the conference so far, uh, and I hope you get to learn an awful lot uh, while you're here. So today's session is about a certificate program that the Institute for Healthcare Advancement uh, has created. It's called the Health Literacy Specialist Certificate. This is a professional development tool, and my purpose for today is to uh, really tell you about the certificate, how it came about, how it was designed, what is in it, what, what, what all um, you, know, you can expect to see uh, when, you know, if you decide to, to take any of these courses, uh, how you can use this in terms of your, your professional, um, uh, your work, uh, your own professional development uh, trajectory and how you can implement some of these um, um, uh, aspects or elements of the, the, the certificate into your work. And I wanna try to finish uh, at about five minutes until the hour. So we have about 15 minutes for Q&A. Um, the session ends at 10 minutes past the hour. If you have a question, uh, please go ahead and type that in the uh, Q&A box. Um, I don't have a moderator, so I'm probably gonna just look at that and answer those questions uh, toward the end or at the end of the session. Uh, if you wanna just chat with your fellow attendees, uh, go ahead and use that chat box function that'll work for that. You can either send the chat to everybody, or if you see somebody on there who's a buddy and you want to just send them a hey or a shout out, you can use that tool as well. So let's go ahead and get started. Uh, thanks again, everybody, for being here. Um, let's see. Here we go. Okay. So as with any session, we want to kind of give you our, um, our learning objectives, uh, what we're going to learn today. We're going to provide you with an overview of what this uh, health literacy specialist certificate is about, what the actual micro credentials uh, are here. Uh, and one of the really important elements, I think, anyway, is the distinction between a certificate and certification. These are two terms uh, that get uh, confused or, or misused or, or used uh, kind of in error quite often, uh, but they are actually quite different entities. And so we are. What this is, is a certificate, and we'll talk about what some of those differences are. Uh, again, we'll talk about how this was created, and then how this certificate can be used in your own professional development, and the benefits of earning any of these certificates, and then our next step. So let's go ahead and get going. First, just a little uh, shout out for ourselves or context for who we are and what we do, the Institute for Healthcare Advancement. We're a 501c3 healthcare nonprofit. We're a public benefit charity. Um, We've been around since the early 90s. We've been in health literacy since 1999. We produce an annual continuing education conference. In addition to this one, that's in May, uh, that's a virtual conference. And during the pandemic, since it's been virtual, uh, we we've waived the registration fees for that. So we hope you can join us there in, uh, in May. We also publish the, uh, the journal Health Literacy Research and Practice. That's a peer reviewed indexed open access journal. Um, and we also administer the Health Literacy Solution Center. There's the URL on your screen. This is an online community hub of individuals who are interested in health literacy. It's about 10,000 people. Uh, we provide information on uh, or our opportunities for education, uh, to share and look up resources, and also to be able to network among your, uh, your colleagues, your peers. So the, um, the seven micro-credentials that are involved in the Health Literacy Specialist Certificate. You can see here on the screen, um, and we'll talk about how we came up with those different uh, uh, areas uh, in, in a little bit. But each of these uh, is a separate micro-credential or program that you, that you can take. Uh, the asterisks are indicating which ones are available. So the, the language, culture, diversity, that one is available to take now. Um, we're just finishing up the final uh, standard setting and beta testing for uh, the ones that are with two asterisks. That would be education, ethics, public health, and community engagement. And those should be available for you to, to take 
uh, within the next two weeks. And then sometime in November, the final two um, micro-credentials communication and organizational systems and policies will be available. Um, so what is a, um, um, what is a, oops, sorry. Uh, what is an assessment based? I'm just trying to get rid of this little line up here. Um, um, an assessment based certificate. Essentially, it's a short non-degree granting program. So it is very targeted in terms of what it teaches, provides instruction and training toward gaining knowledge, skills, and competencies in a specific area. And then there's a final exam or what we would call an end of program assessment. So that's why this is called an assessment-based certificate. Uh, and that's based upon the learning objectives. There is a, uh, uh, in order to earn the digital badge for that micro-credential, there is a cut score or a passing score that you need to, to, to achieve. And that's part of that final process that I was talking about. So we uh, work with a psychometrician uh, and a group of subject matter experts to determine a cut score level. In other words, out of 50 questions, how many do you need to get right in order to pass? And it's a very rigorous process. And we use a, a subject matter expert uh, panel and also uh, uh, outside beta testers. And we kind of look at all of those results and we land on what is that, um, that number of how many questions in that final assessment you need to get right in order to pass the certificate and earn the digital badge. Um, the, uh, um, which of course requires the completion of just going through the program. And the reason that we do this is to build capacity in a profession and fill an ongoing skills gap. That's really what a um, assessment-based certificate is about. Um, and so, uh, sorry, my, my slides are, I'm having a little issue with them. Here we go. So we talked a little bit earlier about what are the definitions uh, or the difference between a certificate and a certification. Um, so what we are offering here is a, uh, a, a certificate and that is based on very narrow content scope. In other words, the, um, the communication micro-credential um, will focus specifically on issues within communication uh, within health literacy. Uh, a certification is really based on your broad professional role and how well and how well educated and how knowledgeable are you within your particular field. A certificate does not grant a designation or a credential. You'll earn a digital badge, but it doesn't award a designation or letters after your name, whereas a certificate certification does. So uh, many of you attending this conference may be a CHES or have the CHES or MCHES um, designation. Uh, CPA is another uh, a type of uh, designation. So for a certification, you would earn, if you pass a, an examination that you sit down, you would earn those credentials and those are good for a certain number of years at which time you need to requalify for those. A certificate reflects completion of a training or curriculum. So when you take one of those courses, such as the communication, or the public health or ethics, um, you would earn that particular certificate or in our case, a micro-credential. Certification is not really based upon a, a, um, a, a curriculum or a training. Again, it's, it's reflective of your knowledge base and your skill base as a professional in a particular field. Uh, a certificate does not have renewal, uh, maintenance and renewal requirements. It's just, you take it once and you learn something. A certification, you do have maintenance and re renewal requirements. You may have to, uh, you generally would take a, uh, a proctored examination every, uh, at certain intervals. You may have to have a certain number of hours of continuing education. Uh, there may be some other options in terms of other kinds of portfolios that you can do, work, those kinds of things that would allow you to um, maintain that particular certification. The certificate is pro proprietary and institution specifics. In other words, IHA uh, has the copyright or the intellectual um, property rights to that uh, certificate program. And the certification, it's really defined again by your profession and your publicly available resources. How well do you know uh, the, the, um, your profession and what it is that you do? So how did we create this certificate? Um, we started in 2016, quite some time ago. Um, and we really just asked people, is this something that you'd be interested in? And we got a very good response uh, in terms of the interest for that. So we decided to go forward. We had a call for applications for people to participate in a job analysis task force. And you can see at the asterisk, that's the, uh, the citation for the uh, standards that we followed in terms of pulling all of this together. 
Uh, we had a task force of 16 very diverse subject matter experts uh, and over a, a, a two day uh, period, um, we, we kind of did a, um, uh, 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 went through some exercises and we answered the questions, what would an individual need to know and what would an individual need to be able to do in order to be considered a health literacy specialist? So those came up with knowledge statements and task statements uh, that one would need to know and be able to do in order to be considered a health literacy specialist. Um, those, that information was pulled together uh, by a, a psychometrician vetted by the Job Analysis Task Force participants and uh, put out into the um, broader health literacy community. Uh, we, uh, we had a response rate of 64%, 334 responses. Uh, and they said, yes, in fact, this, this does resonate, this does ring true. And then we had nine uh, subject matter experts review that data, determine the weightings and the specific domains or the areas, what we now call the micro-credentials. Um, so how does one use a, uh, a, this particular framework, the, the, uh, uh, the, the, the um, seven areas that, we show, that I showed you in the slide a little bit earlier? So one way that we use it is with our annual health literacy conference. Uh, we uh, use, uh, for every breakout session that we have, we uh, uh, assign one of the uh, domains. So let's just go back to that really quickly. Uh, these uh, seven domains. So when we have our conference, all of our breakout sessions, uh, this particular breakout session may be linked specifically to public health. This other breakout session may be linked specifically to language, culture, and diversity. So if you're using this as a, um, uh, as a guide for you to design your own professional development or your own educational journey or experience, we provide those designations for you. Um, you can select the domains or the micro-credentials based upon your work requirements. What is it that your work is requiring you to do or to know? Uh, same thing if you just feel like you wish to establish, you know, uh, expand your own knowledge base or learn something that you, um, don't feel you have some expertise within the health literacy domain, uh, you can select one of those other um, um, uh, micro-credentials. And then also we've created a, uh, a, a, micro, uh, a health literacy specialist model job description, because ultimately what we really want is for people to be able to say, uh, to either uh, provide some structure to their existing uh, jobs, or if you're in a uh, managerial position to create a structure for a job description for a health literacy specialist. Um, and I, I know it has a link to our old website there. If you wait uh, until the end of next week, we actually, uh, that will be on our solution center and we'll send a notice out to everybody when that one's available. But um, there is, just know that there is a model job description that you can use to structure a uh, job description for a health literacy specialist. Um, so also, what are some of the benefits uh, for earning a health literacy specialist certificate? There's lots of different ones. Really, when we're talking about this, we know that um, those with limited or poor health literacy tend to have poor outcomes and uh, have, you know, experience a lot of disparities in terms of accessing and using the healthcare system. We know that there are significant um, um, uh, gaps there between the healthcare system and individuals with limited or low uh, health literacy skills. So the, um, uh, by learning or by taking this particular course, you learn about that and you learn ways that these, these are very practice and operationally oriented. You learn ways to kind of close those gaps and how to be much more inclusive in your work so that we tend to level the playing field and that we make that move or that jump uh, or move that needle a little bit more to a, 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 an outcome or a vision of health equity. So some of the specific ways would be um, any of those, any healthcare organizations that uh, serve a Medicare or Medicaid population, um, and which is essentially most everyone, um, you have a requirement to make your health information accessible, including grade readability requirements. These are things that you can learn when you take some of these micro-credentials, specifically the communication one. Healthy People 2030 um, 
has, re, has organized the social determinants of health into five domains, and health literacy is a key issue in the health access and quality domain. Um, and we know that health literacy and implementing health literacy practices can really have an upstream effect on many of these social determinants of health. Um, and health literacy specialists can really become the subject matter experts or the advocates in their organization to lead efforts to ensure health literacy is addressed in all patient-centered encounters and materials. Um, this is really important because uh, it takes a champion. It takes somebody who really understands how to organize and how to um, build these teams, these collaboratives within your own organization. And the uh, micro-credential on organizational systems and policies really provides you with that information on how to go ahead and do and organize that. You know, health literacy specialists become part of the solution. They, uh, you can really help to establish those strong relations, uh, relationships with pa patients and their families, resulting in better patient adherence. Uh, for instance, to things like medication, prescription, managing chronic illnesses, and, and really help to uh, uh, teach providers how to build those strong patient provider relationships, which of course has that downstream effect of um, really helping to increase that self-efficacy within patients, that understanding. Um, it can also facilitate the development of disease management, case management, and care transition programs and other quality initiatives. Again, uh, those who are reimbursed by CMS um, or anybody who's just really interested in um, better outcomes for their patients. Uh, these micro-credentials really teach you how to, how to do that. Uh, and, and again, this leadership uh, aspect of creating and leading your internal collaborators to achieve health literate organization status. Um, and again, you know, I, I think, and I think many of you really understand and know this, one of the key factors to a successful implementation or infusion of health literacy into an organization starts with awareness. If people don't understand what health literacy is, uh, the scope of how uh, um, pervasive it is. We know that only about 12% or about one in 10 individual, you know, adults in the United States are considered um, proficient in health literacy, which means nine out of 10 are less than proficient. And about a third uh, fall into the bottom two categories, which are below basic and basic in terms of health literacy. So it really starts with that notion of uh, creating awareness and understanding that Probably a lot of the things that you're doing as a uh, health literacy, you know, as an organization uh, may not be having the intended effect because the recipients of your message and those that you serve just don't have the capacity to understand what we're doing. And that's on us. And so we as uh, healthcare professionals need to understand that there is a gap and that there, you know, what is the nature of this gap here and how can we as the healthcare uh, professional, narrow that gap and, and really make that be a much more level playing field and work with people where they are and not try to get people to come to where we are. So these are all things that you will learn in a very structured format with these health literacy specialist certificate programs. So personally and professionally, why would we want to do this? Um, you know, uh, if you're kind of just starting out as a health literacy professional or you just kind of became aware of, of health literacy, this really provides you with a very defined and clear career development path. As I said before, you can um, really pick and choose which of these uh, micro-credentials you want to, uh, want to take and, 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 and learn from. Uh, there's, these are really focused and comprehensive training in those identified topics that are considered essential roles, essential to roles in the field. So again, if you're a clinician, you may pick two or three of these. If you're a public health professional, uh, there may be a different, a few of these that you would choose. Um, if you are a writer or an editor, or you work for a uh, health insurance planner, you know, an insurer or a payer or a provider um, on the uh, patient education, uh, there may be specific other ones that you work, that, that you would choose. And the nice thing is, is that for you as a healthcare professional, this documents and it kind of validates the, your, your acquisition of that knowledge. Uh, you would earn that digital badge and you can say, yes, I, it's not that I just attended some conference, but I've actually taken this micro-credential within this health literacy specialist certificate and I have earned this. So this is something that I can do. And you know, sometimes that can be the difference between 
um, being, you know, with a promotion or a pay raise or a, a you know, increase in job responsibility for wherever you work. And again, it's just the opportunity to expand your own knowledge and grow professionally. There's that personal uh, satisfaction of, of, of being a lifelong learner and, and advancing your own knowledge base. Um, so next steps. Um, the, uh, as, I, as I showed you on that earlier slide, there are seven micro credentials that comprise the overall health literacy specialist certificate. Um, and one is available now. There's another uh, four that will be available in, um, in two weeks. And then in November, the final two will be available. So by the end of November, all seven of these will be available. Um, we are going to be applying for accreditation for these certificates, but we can't do that until these are out in the field and people are using them and we get some experience in terms of people um, um, actually taking them and see how they do with the, uh, their performance on the, uh, on the final assessment. And actually that's part of our beta test process. So this accreditation application uh, for each of those micro credentials is actually going out after our beta test is being done. So by the time we release these for you to take, that accreditation application has been submitted to uh, ANSI using the ICE 1100 standard for assessment-based certificate programs. And so when that comes back um, and we feel reasonably uh, certain that we will get that accreditation, asterisk, quotes, um, caveat, caveat, but um, we are working with people who are very well-versed in this area and have done this for quite some time and they know what needs to be included in those uh, accreditation applications for, you know, for a successful uh, accreditation application. So we feel very confident that we will earn that accreditation, but of course, we don't know that until that comes back. Since this has been uh, an ongoing process for quite some time, there is kind of a shelf life uh, for this information. So we will be doing our next job analysis uh, in, uh, in the first quarter or two of, of, of next year of 2022. And what that really will be is just to kind of review the information that we have in these uh, certificates to make sure it's still current. Now, frankly, um, the, the, the program was only created within the last year um, and we were using peer reviewers, subject matter experts. So the currency of all this information is very fresh. This is just a procedural step that we need to go through. But the good news is, is that we are using, um, that we are going to invite uh, those from uh, a couple of other countries to participate as well so that uh, this certificate would have some uh, validity in other countries as well. Right now, the uh, initial job analysis task force was uh, composed of individuals strictly from the United States. It could certainly be used in other countries with similar uh, approaches in terms of healthcare system, but in terms of the accreditation process and the standards, um, it probably wouldn't be something if you were in another country, you could say, yes, this, there's an absolute correlation here. So uh, for instance, I, we, you know, we have some friends and colleagues in Canada who will be inviting them to participate. We've had some initial conversations with some folks in the UK. If anybody uh, is from uh, attending this session is from another country or knows of as colleagues uh, from another country and you'd be interested in having some representation in that, uh, that next job analysis, please reach out to me directly on the last slide is my, uh, my contact information. And we would love to talk to you. I'd love to have that be expanded uh, to, um, to other countries as well. And then once that job analysis has been completed and you make any uh, uh, slight adjustments to that certificate program, we wanna see how that kind of plays out for a little while and see what, um, the, um, what the interest level is by the health literacy community. And if there is an appetite for this and we will do some surveying, and if we see that individuals would be interested in a subsequent step to the creation of a certification, um, we will assess all of that information. And if that's something that the community has an appetite for and wishes to do, we would uh, launch that process. And that would probably, you know, that's gonna be a, that's a, that's a, you know, it's a longer process uh, because it's very um, structured uh, and a rigorous process. But if there is interest in that with the, within the, the health literacy community, we would certainly consider that. 
So that's the kind of presentation that I have for the moment. Um, what I'd like to do, and I'm sorry, I just want to make sure I'm on time here. Um, there we go. I want to leave a few minutes for uh, questions and answers. Uh, so let's see. Um, and again, pardon my my face jumping into the uh, the, the screen here, but I want to. Um, um, make sure I can read this because my eyesight's not that great. So uh, AA anonymous attendee asked, can the trainings be taken at any time on demand or is there a time frame within which to complete them? That's a great question. Thank you. So you can take the training anytime. Um, there is a, this, this is a fee-based program. Um, um, but the, uh, yes, the trainings can be taken at any time. You just need to, from the time you uh, purchase that certificate, uh, and, and it's available in live uh, six, within six months to take it. And you can take a little bit, you can pause back out of the program, go have dinner, wait a couple of days, and you can pick back up where you, uh, where you left off. Probably a better idea or a good idea to, um, um, to try and take it within a, a shorter time frame so that your, uh, the information that you're loading into your short-term memory kind of stays there. Um, so that you, you you are prepared to take that final assessment. But yes, you can take it at any time on demand. You can back out and come back in. Um, uh, Rochelle asks, would those who obtain certificates have to retest for certification once it is accredited? So uh, again, a couple of things here. When um, uh, for the certificate program, if you take the micro-credential and you pass the final assessment, no, you do not need to uh, take that final assessment again once the accredita accreditation decision has been made by the accrediting body. The certification, as I said, that's a separate process. Uh, and if and when we do decide to launch a certification process, that would be, um, um, uh, you would have to go through that as a separate process. So the certificate one is just a linear, pro a linear process. And then the certification, you would need to sit for an examination for that to get the letters after your name. But once you take the micro-credential for the certificate and you pass the final assessment, uh, no, you don't need to retake it once the accreditation. That's just a designation by the accrediting organization. So you can say, oh, and by the way, this is accredited by, um, by ANSI, okay? Uh, Apichaya, and pardon me for butchering the pronunciation on your name, said, what are the criteria to be able to participate in the training? What is the level of the degree? Again, it's not a degree. It's not a degree granting program. It is a, um, it is a specific targeted uh, educational program. We ask that people have a general knowledge of health literacy. And um, on our Health Literacy Solution Center, there is a uh, Health Literacy 101 training that I, uh, it, it's a recorded one. And I give that every year at our Health Literacy Conference. That should provide you with a good general overview of health literacy. There are a few other general uh, health literacy introductory types of programs that we would suggest for you to take, just so that some of these things are not completely foreign to you. Um, and if you visit our Health Literacy Solution Center, uh, there, there are some links there for um, some of these introductory types of uh, courses that you can take. The one that we do is simply one. There's a number of other ones as well. And that URL is Health Literacy Solutions. Dot org. It's on my um, the, on the final slide on, the, on the, the slide there in front of you. Um, so let's see. That was answered live. Um, answered live. Pardon me for that. Okay. Um, Deborah asks: Is the six month limit for access per micro credential or for the entire package plus final assessment? So it is for the time when you purchase those. Uh, certificates and they are actually available. Um, and if you need some additional time, you can uh, write to us and say, you know, can I get some time? And we can we can work with you on that. It's just sort of a standard within this particular field that these things not be, uh, you know, uh, not have any kind of time limit. So it's just to kind of make sure you're focused on that and that you, um, uh, you know, and that you 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 make sure you take that within a specific period of time. So I think one of the other things that Deborah is alluding to is that 
Um, we are, you know, look, we're a nonprofit. Uh, we're not really, you know, our, our primary goal here is our mission. And part of our mission is education and elevating the health literacy field. Um, we are charging towards this because we did make a significant six-figure investment in creating this. Uh, but if you look at the uh, fees that we're charging for this certificate, they are very, very reasonable. Um, and if you go on the uh, Health Literacy Solutions Center now, um, there are some pretty significant discounts for purchasing those either individually or as a, a, a package of all seven. Uh, that will, those discounts will be available from now through the end of the year. And so again, our goal is to make sure that we get you educated, uh, provide professional development opportunities for you. Uh, we have continuing education credits you can get for these micro credentials as well. And um, um, you know that's that's sort of our overall goal. So uh, Deborah, I hope that answered your question. Uh, let's see and. F-N-J-O-R-O-R-A-I, I'm sorry, I might even try to produce that or pronounce that just out of respect for you. But did you say these are already available? What is the application process? Um, so uh, there is um, one of those is available now. Let me just uh, scoot back to the, uh, the slide here. Um, so the uh, language, culture, and diversity, the one with one asterisk, that is available now. You can purchase and take that now. Um, education, ethics, public health, and community engagement should be available, let's just say, by the end of October. Uh, those are just going through the final um, standard setting and beta testing processes right now. And as soon as those are done and we establish that cut score, uh, those will be released and available for you to take. Uh, and then the final two, communication and organizational systems and policies, um, those should be available sometime in November. So again, at the latest, by the end of November, all seven of these are available. Uh, the language, culture, university now, and then those other four, education, ethics, public health, and community engagement <clears throat> by the end of the month and the other two by November. Uh, there is no um, application process. Again, we just ask, and this is for your benefit, that you have a basic understanding of health literacy. And so the, the, um, what I was alluding to with the, um, um, some of the links for some of those basic kind of health literacy 101 basic introduction programs, you can find those on the solution center, healthliteracysolutions.org. Um, let's see, and there were a few chats. Uh, let me see if there were some actual questions in there. Uh, please post your question. <laughs> what is the website to sign up for the certificate? Is there a cost? So the website is healthliteracysolutions.org. And yes, there is a cost. Um, it is a pretty reasonable cost and that's all listed there on the website. Uh, did you say it's already available and open for application? What is the process? We just answered that one. Um, okay, uh, let's see, uh, is there another? question in the Q&A um, that I did not answer, I think. Um, I think we've got those answered. Um, if anybody else has any other questions, I am happy to answer, answer any of those. But again, um, the, um, this is an effort for us to take health literacy best practices and principles and provide a structured approach for you to learn what those are and how to use those, and then uh, uh, put that uh, uh, into your particular practice. So we're really, um, we're trying to just provide a very structured approach to your professional development so that you can learn how to uh, implement uh, these, these practices, understand these practices, and implement them into your professional work. Uh, I think there's a very um, uh, satisfying component to uh, being a lifelong learner and learning some of these things, and also to be able to say, yes, I took this, and this is a uh, something that I could put on my resume. Uh, there's a digital badge you can use on your LinkedIn or on any of your profiles or your, your e-resumes, any of those sorts of things. I think there's certainly some pride that you can take in terms of saying that you've taken these steps to um, uh, you know, to, to continue to learn. 
and distinguish yourself as a uh, as a health literacy professional. Um, and so the the, the cost, I, I again, if you go to healthliteracysolutions.org, um, there is uh, each of those certificates. If I recall, if you bundle all seven of those together and you pre-purchase those, I think uh, the cost for all seven of them is uh, somewhere around six hundred and fifty or seven hundred dollars. Um, to contrast that, I just took a single certificate program uh, from an organization to learn about. Uh, this was a while ago to learn about uh, certificates and sort of to learn about certification. And one certificate, that one certificate to learn about certification cost fifteen hundred dollars. So if you look around, these are actually very uh, competitively priced. Uh, the cost for uh, attending a conference, as you know, can be two, three hundred dollars for a conference, and it's not a structured approach. So um, everybody with whom we've spoken and our our um, kind of landscape survey of what these things cost have agreed. Uh, these are very, very reasonable fees uh, for this. Um, so I think I'm uh, just looking to see if there are any other questions that we have not addressed. Um, I think that's about it. Um, I'm going to stick around for a little bit. Um, uh, if anybody else wants to post another question. Um, I, I'm sorry, I know this uh, virtual uh, platform certainly has some um, uh, lacks a little bit in the, uh, in the immediacy of being able to um, raise your hand and just ask a question. But go ahead and post any of those questions in the Q&A. Um, I think we've got about three more minutes left. Uh, but uh, if not, thank you all very much for attending. Uh, and if you have any questions that don't get answered today, please feel free to um, uh, email me. Uh, let me get back to the last slide there. Uh, oops, <laughs> of course. Um, here's, my, uh, here's my contact information. And let's see, was there one more? I've been involved with beta testing. It's a great, oh, thank you, Marguerite. Um, so there we, we have our first testimonial. Thank you, Marguerite. I appreciate that. Um, and a couple more chats. Um, can you send us the link for applying? So again, it's not an application. If you go to healthliteracysolutions.org, healthliteracysolutions.org, it's right there on the slide. Um, um, you can just uh, um, um, the process for, for, for purchasing that and getting that ready to go is available there. Um, I think that's about it. I'm sorry, I'm doing this on my own. I know you got a, uh, just my forehead in your screen, so my apologies. Any questions, again, please email me, uh, mvalair at ihaforhealth.org. Um, and I will be here for another one minute <laughs> till the session ends. But again, thank you all for coming here. I appreciate it. I hope this is something that you, uh, avail yourselves of. Uh, I personally think this is a great program. Um, and that's a biased opinion, of course, but uh, uh, as Marguerite said, she also agrees that it's a, a great program. So thank you for that. Take care, everybody. Enjoy the rest of your conference and um, hope to see you in some of the other sessions.